Honestly, it's it's a fluke. It's a fluke. It's a fluke. They're not the better team. Not even close. If they were the better team, they wouldn't have been down four dragons in 11k at the end of the game. But we messed up. We messed up one team fight and we lose the game. So they can have the set. But if we meet them in playoffs, I'm sure we'll beat them. It's a fluke. Unbelievable finish. I wouldn't necessarily say like, oh wow, CLG is really good. Anybody could have taken those games, so it doesn't really matter. I know that they're not fit. We're not a better team, but who cares? We won. Well, strong words as always from Dardock. Welcome back to the Battle Arena, though. Didn't expect it to be close. They played a ton of close sets in the regular season. We'll see if TL can kind of ease that out here after game number one. Yeah, I mean, honestly, I would feel the same way as Dardock after that week eight series that yeah. he was talking about, where they were up so much and then lost to that one team fight. The one thing I would say after that series also, though, is that an advantage CLG have over Team Liquid has been their poise in game. You know, they, they're all pretty much senior League of Legends players, mm -hmm. and their in game discipline gives them a pretty big edge. Uh, we're going to have to see that tested now for Team Liquid. Can they match and have in game poise and come back after a game one loss in this series? As they think these two teams are extremely close in skill. Yeah, I definitely agree. And one guy for TL who's going to have to step up is going to be Phoenix because it was Huhi in game one on Syndra who was really dominant. He was winning lane, you know, even though it's his opponent who got the counter pick, and he was crushing in team fights. Honestly, that was an extreme. That was a game, you know, play of the game performance there from Huhi. Yeah. Definitely impressive stuff. The other thing that was very impressive uh, from CLG obviously is the macro game, and people were like, "Oh my goodness, lane swaps are gone." That doesn't mean that macro is gone and macro is dead. There are actually more objectives early now with the extra gold there for the early turrets. So, you know, new ways to get that early gold are very important. And it's also about the importance of preparation. They had an incredible game plan going into this. They executed perfectly. Rotate your bot lane up to top after already getting that first blood. Then they take the turret. They're able to expand that gold lead and move it around the map. It's a great game plan. Get first blood and then <laughs> everything's going to go to plan after that. Uh, honestly, though, it really was. And it comes in two parts. Everyone keeps mentioning Zix. He's an amazing coach. He's yep. been an amazing analyst for the team. He's been with them for so long. Someone that also deserves a lot of respect is Aframu. And I, I talk a lot about in-game leadership. And Aframu has been one of these guys that, for me, honestly, is on the same tier as high in terms of leadership, in-game leadership for teams. He is always directing CLG, and he has been with the team for so long, especially for a team that's always been known for their macro. This guy deserves respect. And you talk about poise. When they were down 10K in that team fight, going into it, you hear the comms. Afro's like, this is our fight. They're mm -hmm. confident. They're going into it, and he's able to lead them. Well, on the other side, Lola confirms that Liquid is a team who was driven by the emotional highs and lows of the LCS competition. Yeah, our team goes from like the most happy, like sunshine rainbow team to like the most uh, depressing. There's a void in the TL house team. So there's a lot of like, it's always like an emotional roller coaster with TL. There's a, always like the really bright days, there's always like the good weeks where we 2 0. There's always like the, and there's always like the bad days where we go 0 2 and then people don't even want to talk to each other. So I think there's a part of that with every team, but I think in terms of our team in, gen like, in particular, we have. It, like way more extreme like there's really big ups and there's really big downs and it's like hard to like sustain emotionally with that but i've like worked through it and i think most of our teammates have what has done that as well but in terms of keeping that up it's yeah it's definitely a struggle sometimes but i still like all my team members a lot well thankfully for lola the good thing about roller coasters is that it's always only, it's fun the whole time and you have to get off the ride i have to say <laughs> clg and clg fans are very accustomed to roller coasters <laughs> and highs and lows he talks about that Think about it. CLG are the only team to win the North American LCS Championship and also have to fight back from relegations from the North American LCS. Well, we are into the draft for game number two. Liquid did select the red side here for the second game. Just important to note as well. So we will keep the sides we had in the first game as far as the draft goes. Both teams drafted very solid. I felt like they're in the first game. We'll see what the changes, Ho -ho! if there are changes at all here. All right. Throwaway ban starting it off. First ban on blue side throw away to Aatrox. I'm pretty sure that was intentional here. I'm not we'll really have to sure. see if yeah. that was a we'll have to see if there's a bug or something going on. But honestly, sometimes you do a throwaway. If you're doing a throwaway though, you have to target ban somebody and usually target ban their champion pool. So maybe we'll get a reset here uh, on champion select. 
But uh, yeah, it's it's certainly possible. It was just a straight up accident, but uh, so there... disrespect, man! Right off the bat, we beat you game one. We know that you're an emotional team. <laughs> take this. I mean, you know, it's a little so bit. So BF of... swords on Gragas. Take that. <laughs> <laughs> it was actually... Omerker here. BF sword there. Atrox ban over there. Thankfully, it was Shen. Actually, no, Atrox. It was getting at oh, band away. Okay. So, bit of a misclick there. We will reset champs like <laughs> and get things started. I'm with you. I think that is actually kind of a solid strategy you can use. But at least in this game, Zik's not going that far. Maybe if they're up 2-0, it's going straight in there. I always like to jump in there as quickly as possible. Give him credit. Oh, mental game play. Right here. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. yeah that's, that's brilliant. It's the mind games. <laughs> and the players are having some fun with the Loyal are joking around. Oh, they found my secret account. They didn't know about the Aatrox. So uh, we'll get it going here again pretty soon. But uh, we'll be interested to see if there are any pick and ban adaptations, mm -hmm. you know, or if these teams are just confident to go right back in it and just run it back. Because sometimes people are saying, hey, you know what? It wasn't the draft. It was the way we played the game. And honestly, if we were going down the checklist of things I thought were important for Team Liquid going into draft phase, I thought game number one, they actually checked quite a lot of those boxes. Mm. They got the Ash on their team, which was going to be very important. They saved the counter pick for Phoenix, which was supposed to be how they have control and which they used to win a lot of their series. Yeah. But uh, that didn't work out for them. So I'm very curious to see what game number two holds in store. Well, the runback might be beginning here. CLG start off with the same two bands. There's Shen and Talia, Siva and Karma will be the shift there for Team Liquid. Vladimir going to keep it the same here for CLG, though. And Karma is a key adaptation, right? This is something that they use to really kind of bully in uh, in the early game. And they were able to pick on this 2v2 lane a little bit, which allowed Afro to roam to support his teammates when they had been chunked out. That's something that could have snowballed the game for TL. You know, if Darnock was able to contest at that red buff, if he's able to take things like this away, but he couldn't because they had the bot lane advantage and Afro helped out. Ooh, the Syndra ban even, who he gets respect from Team Liquid here. And we'll see what the first pick is. The Rek'Sai is definitely available. The Gragas is available. Those have been traded. And I feel like both teams feel very comfortable to trade jungle picks. So I don't think that'll be early on uh, in the draft phase. And there it is again, Darshan. We said it. He's been picking this every series versus Team Liquid, even in the Week 8 one, blind picking it into Lorlo, who's a guy that's known for Aurelia. It's a bold move from CLG. Paid off last game. See if it pays off this game. It, it definitely did pay off. And it's something that you always kind of get a little bit nervous or frustrated about because for Aurelia, you have to all in Gnar to take that advantage. It's not like you're poking him out, right? Gnar is doing fine in the lane just by playing it slowly, whereas Aurelia needs to win these all-ins. And last game, Smithy played around that. He was in the top lane constantly. And sometimes that gets into your mind. You start to doubt yourself even when there are opportunities to go for it because you're like, well, what if the jungle's in? Well, more adaptations are from Team Liquid. Greg is picked up by Dada and Cassio, which was banned in game one, but picked there for Team Liquid. Very fearsome first round here from Team Liquid. I like this answer a lot. Uh, the game that Team Liquid won in the previous series versus CLG was all around Phoenix's Cassiopeia. He absolutely smashed who he, that champion has a lot of kill pressure in the mid lane and even the ability to get kills when she's getting ganked. With Darduck also being on the Gragas, the playmaker, that, that just screams more mid lane focus, more mid lane control from Team Liquid. They're gonna go right back to it and see if they can have better luck this time around. Well, you want playmaking. I was going to say, I was going to say, <laughs> yeah, Afro moves Karma's banned out, great. Because people like seeing playmaking from Afro move. People like it when Afro move has these tools in his champion where he's either on the front line as a melee champion, the Alistar he's known for, or the Bard, the fantastic Bard. He was one of the first North American LCS supports to really be known for the champion. And now they have it with the Ash as well. A lot of long range playmaking abilities. I also really like it in combination with the Gnar. If you're able to set up a good ultimate on some of these carries, it can allow Time or Darshan to get in there with the Mega Gnar, be on top of them, and set up the CC combo. Well, Ash priority as well for CLG. We've seen a lot of focus around this pick, so I like that takeaway there for them as well. Team Liquid, looking for their next few picks here. Fabi, we've seen a lot of Ash Jin from him. It would make sense to go back to this sort of pick. Looks like they might just lock down the bottom lane. It's Brom Jin for picks three and four. Ooh, this was one of my first and favorite duos that I ever saw Team Liquid pick up when Fabi first joined the team. Yeah. They played they so much uh, Jin Brom, and they got kills level one. They got kills in invades. So there's definitely some level one flexibility here from Team Liquid as well that I really like. Maybe they can just get this one started off a lot earlier and try and even up the series here in game number two. It looks to me like Team Liquid, at least in the pick ban phase, have been able to refocus and kind of throw out that game one. It doesn't look like they're tumbling down the tilt path, but uh, we shall see here as CLG get the last two. CLG just trying to lock down these last few picks. 
Afro's having some fun. Stick says hovering his favorite Warwick. Ten seconds now for COD to lock in this draft. I do expect, you know, uh, Rek'Sai and something else to come in here. But on Team Liquid's side, I also want to mention Gragas pick for Dardoch. He has a lot of experience playing in the 2-on-2 with Lorlo. And if Lorlo does want to go that Aurelia, you're talking about all-inning. Gragas is so good at all-inning Gnar because he can interrupt the hop. You can't yep. hop on the jungler, which is one of the main escape paths, because uh, Body Slam will interrupt it. And they could, you know, go that way. Maybe you think, oh, yes. Obviously, they want to play around mid lane. They've got Cassiopeia, so much late game damage, but possibilities for Dardoch are very wide here. All three lanes look like very gankable lanes, and he's on a very good early ganking jungler. And he is also you know, one of the most outspoken people on the team. So a lot of weight on Dardoch's shoulders, I think, for this game number two to bring their team back and avoid that tilt and that snowball that people have uh, begun to associate with them. Really standard end for the draft as well. You can see Victor for Kuhi and Rexay that you predicted. Aurelia also going to be back into Lolo's hands. So Teal kind of end this the way we expected to. But again, very solid comps for the two teams once again. Yeah, I think it's it's going to be really tough in this matchup because for Smithy, you know, do you take into consideration how last series went when he was on the Cassiopeia? Are you trying to play around who he and protect him? Because I don't think that Victor necessarily has the best gank assist in this. And at the same time, you have to defend your top laner from these all in. So there's a lot of different places that he can go. And also your bot lane wants to push in. That yeah. makes them susceptible. From a jungler's perspective, I would say mid lane vision control from yeah. Smithy. Just use your tremor sense to make sure that it's safe for you to go place the vision. And then that allows you to go place or, uh, forward facing wards. That's one of the best things about Rek'Sai. She can actually be pretty confident when she's going to place the early wards and just you know rely on that rather than trying to camp for him. Well, it could, could lead to a, a lot of emphasis on Scuttles as well. Mm -hmm. Don't forget to get the votes rolling in though as we move into game two of the series, hashtag CLG or TL win, depending on who you are feeling. TL did barely win the first game fan vote. We'll see if the CLG fans are feeling a little more alive now that they've won the first game, but in the best of five, it is a long road for either of these two teams in the series. Can TL tie it up or are CLG gonna put themselves in the best possible position? to play TSM. We're going to have to find out. So out into the rift for game number two. Oh, yeah. Already looking ahead to TSM. That is a daunting task. Can't Before think about it now. <laughs> we get to that, yes. This series just started, my friend. And Matt actually... Uh, okay, never mind. It just, hadn't showed, <laughs> it just hadn't showed up yet. The trinket wasn't showing on there. And I was like, what? What's happening there? But anyway, trinket shows up. Yeah, that's a spectator well. thing. Uh, Freak talked about it a little while ago. Anyways, everybody opening up to standard uh, defensive openings here. We'll see if there's any early invades. I mentioned in Champions Select the possibilities that are opened up when you have Braum and Braum plus Jin, especially for level ones, but it doesn't look like Team Liquid are trying to go aggressive super early on. Maybe that's a choice that, you know, we don't want to be too risky in the level one of game two after losing game one, because if you lose something like that, then it's very disheartening. Uh, and they might just want to kind of calm down a little bit. I actually like the adaptations in bot lane. So those wards in the bushes are not that standard, but what this is, mm. is that it's saying, okay, we're gonna take our jungle camp, and then when we come to lane, sometimes the response is actually to be camping that and kind of cheese them out and push them off the wave so you can get level two first anyway. Now this prevents that, so they can safely take their camp and go to lane. Especially with a double range into yeah. a melee ranged uh, duo lane here, that could be so much bottom lane control. And we've talked about how important bottom lane control is in the new patch and how easily it snowballs into early Early first turret kill. Well, looks like we're gonna have a trait of objective series. Afro and Six, they're gonna start off on their Krog Camp, Gromp over on the TL side, and junglers will be starting on the same side of the map once again around that top area. So blue for X Smithy, red for Dardoch. We'll see if they do actually move down to that bottom lane, at least try and show themselves a bit and apply some pressure. Also be interested to see if Smithy wants to kind of do one of those interesting paths where you go Gromp, Wolves, Wraiths, get three, and you can always do those really fast level three ganks on mid, whereas Gragas is gonna be a little bit slower doing the red. Yeah, or, you know, even the alteration, as we've seen, uh, Meteos do a lot. Priority on the Scuttle Crabs that you mm. talked about in Champ Select. The vision uh, may be of extremely high importance here. As of right now, though, uh, it's just doing the quick three camp, get level three, and that gives you a lot of dueling power as well. Let's see what he wants to do, but Phoenix and who he's going to match up once again. Who he's off to an early level two here, but Phoenix now going to hit it. Dashan and Lolo trading up again. We saw Dashan win this lane pretty early on. And then the help came and he was able to snowball it out of control. Lolo struggling a little bit versus the mini now, but now he's back in Mega. Lolo should know how to navigate this matchup relatively well. Yeah, this is actually a good place for Aurelia to sit. 
Uh, because he still has three charges on Corrupting Potion, you want to sit just below the Nar's health, so you always threaten the stun. And you have the Regeneration and Corrupting Potion. You start tugging that as soon as uh, you go for the trade. But meanwhile, let's look at that top lane. Uh, looks like some moves here from Dardoch. Yeah, Dardoch's going for this, but it's actually been anticipated. You can see the Afro already warded out their blue. The fact that he's not there, I think they're going to try to play around this. He may see uh, Smithy go for it. Well, that, the whole team has to buy into that play because Darshan yeah. is pushed up really far. We talked about you can't hop on the Gragas because he can body slam you. It's up to, you know, Dardock if he wants to go for that gank, but it does look to me like it would be an, an interesting choice to go for. Um, the probably thing that the main thing dissuading him is the big amount of minions. Uh, if you go gank for a top laner, obviously it's great if they're pushed up, but the big amount of minions that Lorelo has to clean up. Darshan, they've anticipated oh, this. God. He's actually going to try to get over on a Dardock, and Dardock is far up. This could be a bit awkward Ooh, for him. Darshan actually hops over the wall, but Dardock doesn't really have anywhere to run. He's going to try and uh, finish off the camp, bad. maybe. He's got no other friends. He hits level four, but Darshan's still keeping him zoned away. <laughs> Darshan just needs to block the, block the body oh, slam. Doesn't quite do it there. Now going to keep chasing in. Needs one more. Hyperprop auto gets canceled. That's why you always take the scuttle before going for an invade. It gives you a secure escape path. The extra speed there, he doesn't end up having to blow flashes, and he just takes a little bit of harassment on his way out. I have to say, good job there by Dardok not panicking under pressure when he's been cornered by the Nar. Also, that bot time for Lorlo to pick up all those minions that we mentioned were at the turret, and he, right now he's jumped right back out into an actual CS lead. Uh, it'll be up to Darshan to even that lead back up with these range minions that are currently yeah. sitting in the lane. And it's pretty much just evened up that top lane minion count. Certainly has, but the question is now, can Darshan set up a freeze, right? You have all these range minions here, and it doesn't look like he's going to elect to go for that. But, you know, even at the same time, Smithy did pick up extra camps on the other side of the map because he took the wolves away and just left one of the little ones up. So, you know, I like the try there from Darshan. And had it not been so well played from Dardoch, that could have been first blood potentially. In the meantime, Smithy also cleaned out Dardoch's blue side of the jungle, yeah. so did get some extra farm there. Darshan, nice little play, gonna delay Dardoch, and looks like he's off to a pretty nice start here. Once back in the lane, still Lolo kind of struggling to get onto these minions. Mini now again, such an annoying range champion. Yeah, there's that freeze that you are mentioning. It is really nice to get it. You don't want it to get too big. So he was clearing out a few of them with the AoE, uh, so you don't have to fight in a whole bunch of range minions and keep it a little bit flexible, but still keep it right in front of your turret. Both your, junglers here. Yeah, Dardoch could be here for the counter gank. Uh, Smithy potentially looking, uh, is gonna back off and now Darshan is gonna have to be careful. Yeah, Darshan actually tanking some minion damage there just to keep the freeze going. Dardoch though still in Lolo's back pocket. And Smithy, I think he's leaving the area. Now it's 1v2 for Darshan. Flashes are available. Dun lands in, flashing from Dardoch. Darshan gonna get first blood and he burns his flash. But Lolo claims it. Uh, that flexibility as far as Dardoch and the duo we talked about, if Lolo goes for the Aurelia into the NAR matchup and you have to all in, it is there right out of the side lane bush. CLG knew it was a possibility, but doesn't matter. They don't play around it. Dardoch gets the first uh, kill for Lolo there and they're looking for two. And the TP back is going to mean they can't go for it, but it's critical as well. Darshan actually blew his flash. Lorlo has not used his, which means if they end up in a 1v1, big advantage to Lorlo. CS lead, first blood lead for Aurelia. That makes this matchup extremely difficult and very different from game number one. Now he's going to be much quicker to the Trinity Force, has that level six and teleport advantage. He's walking back to lane, giving up minions. Bottom lane is going to have to be careful too. They're playing really far up. If there's a minion very deep or a ward very deep, they could teleport the Aurelia in as soon as they hit level six. Jin has the ultimate. It gets very dicey down there. Look at mid lane. Talking about Phoenix's domination in the mid lane, he's, he's opened up a bit of a lead for himself. Some of that will be recouped here by Huhi, but bot lane going very well for CLG. Fabi with some of the worst laning statistics in the league, and they are kind of getting manhandled right now in this 2v2. It's minions to collect for six out. Now we'll, just, we'll see where that teleport is used for Lorlo on the top side. Uh, there They're looking. Uh, almost six as well for Ash. Fabi gonna get knocked up there, slowing on some math. But from him flashing in there, I think they're trying to get some damage out of Smithy. Does claim it. Late teleport. Matt actually gets arrowed as well. He's really going to arrive a little too late. Magical Journey should keep them safe. Nice on Baru onto Lolo. CLG. I think there's some lack of communication there because maybe as soon as you see Rek'Sai, if he starts channeling the teleport, it dissuades them or the all-in doesn't happen. But uh, the breakdown there, worst of both worlds. They use the teleport and 
the kill goes over to Counter Logic Gaming. It only gets worse too because Lorlo TP'd away from a massive stack of minions, so he gives up that farm advantage. Already a lot of these have been cleared out. It's two to three waves. He's losing top side for that TP. I mean, that's the difference between top laner perspective and jungler perspective. Uh, <laughs> the, the minions, minions. Kobe! Yeah. <laughs> it's all about the minions! The dog is at least collecting them, I suppose. So they won't go entirely to waste, but yeah, Lolo... Like we said, that's a waste. Just going to that jungler. <laughs> Lolo, it's all about top lane. Lolo will stop up in the matchup. Dash on up 10 CS. Zick Smithy might even be tracking his way. And CLG, once again, they've swapped the duel into the top lane here. Yeah, Smithy actually going for an invade here as well, taking away the red. Because Dardoch spent so much time showing at the turret, uh, Aphromoo is going to come try and help him as well, but three versus four on the top side versus five. Everyone from CLG is here. They're making another big play on the top side to force the early turret. They certainly are, but Teal has anticipated. Matt is already here, and Meganar does expire. I don't think CLG is going to pull the trigger. A little bit failed move uh, as the rest of Team Liquid are going to arrive, so CLG need to know they missed their window. Don't try and force it now. The window's a bit closed. Uh, Fabi is on the way. He might actually be a bit too This is long. risky. Yeah, CLG are committing to the push, actually. Fabi very late to this potential engage, but Team Liquid looks like they've hold, held strong under the Tarek. Smithy, though, caught out position. Gonna get blasted away by the ultimate from Dardog. You caution against it. Hey, the window's closed. Back off. Smithy didn't get the memo there. Going for the extra counter jungle, and Team Liquid punish him. This is, again, another thing that we saw in the last series with Team Liquid and CLG. Smithy going for a little bit of extra counter jungling, staying around too long and giving kills back over to Team Liquid. Look at that gold. Now it's back to dead even, and this is anybody's game. Certainly some disrespect there from Smithy, and I love the adaptation from TL. When they saw the base, they anticipated this, and they sent Matt topside. Had he not been there, they could have perhaps executed a dive very quickly, and it would have looked reminiscent to last game. Well, it looks like CLG once again, we're trying to out macro team Liquid, but Liquid answer well, hold their top out of turret here, and we're actually going to hold these lanes still in the 2v2, but we'll flip things upside down for a little bit. Darshan is bottom lane there, going to continue his 1v1 versus Lola and the Aurelia, and Phoenix are going to get himself a blue, but has been charging up quite a lot of CS and that tier, so looking good for the Liquid mid laner. And if it's looking good for Phoenix, it's looking bad for CLG, because Phoenix has historically been able to carry a lot of the team fights. Uh, in the Team Liquid CLG matchups, especially Cassiopeia with the lead, highest CS in the game, plus he got one of those kills up on the top side. As you mentioned, double buffs as well, everything going his way right now, and uh, it's going to be up to Team Liquid to play around him. Yes, Fabi is losing in the AD carry down bottom in the CS Wars, but he's the Jin. He's usually got low damage numbers anyway, and he's going to try and keep his distance. One thing critical to note, though, Phoenix did not take cleanse, which a lot of people like to do against the Ash. When you do not have cleanse, you have to respect those arrows coming in and CLG pushing for turret first blood. Yeah, try number two here for CLG. There's no turret was taken in. If that first seed don't succeed, one. Kobe. There you go. Ulti. It's Fabi actually there. After him, able to nail him with a tempered fate. Arrow lands it. Stun is perfect. And Xmithy get a CC chain him to death. Matt now getting low. Xmithy still chasing in, but Dardoch could even be in trouble. Phoenix. Oh! oh! Named Prey Seeker. And they've still got a huge minion wave to work with. They can take more. CLG continue the push. Then it's Darshan with the TP. Lorlo doesn't have one. They can look for a dive oh, here. He's in trouble, but Dardo can't quite do enough. X Smithy still keeping them under threat. Phoenix oh. does have his ulti. And CLG do have to book it. Sticks, they got tagged. Now Phoenix wants to chase it. Flashes out of the stun. Ulti gets duked around by Sticks. Are you kidding me? It's not enough, though. It's Phoenix able to still collect him, but the damage is done. Hui going to turn it around. Now, CLG needs to not overstay. We saw that mistake from Smithy last time. TL has respawned. He needs to get out. Looks like they've got out. Darshan getting low versus Lolo, though. He's maybe bullying things around a bit with that early fade. Looks like Darshan does need to go back and shop. But CLG, once again, they'll start a team fight and they'll get the turret for it. Would be critical if Darshan has to use his TP here. He doesn't want to fall too far behind. But back to the fight. All right, so those long-range tools we talked about, uh, Afro does get the initiation. There they double up on the stuns, but it doesn't matter because Smithy's there too. They have a plethora of CC uh, to lock down the bottom lane. This right here, Dardoch walks out of the way to dodge, and Mac walks kind of into it. Uh, that's one of those things where you're like, oh, yeah, I dodged the bullet. Oh, sorry about you standing right behind me, bud, and you were low, so unlucky Ooh, for you. My bad. A little bit like last game, everyone stepping out of the way, mm. not blocking mm. for Fabi. It's like they're playing for themselves and not for the team. Good callback right there, uh, bringing up the old wounds. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, talking about COD always being a united squad, Team Liquid are going to have to show a little bit more teamwork there with some body blocks.
Cormat does get sniped out of the way. Darshan did save that teleport as well. Actually waddles his way back down to the bottom lane, so he's going to be okay. But Lola has had a much better time in this 1v1 lane, and Captain Nicarelli at this time should be positioned to win the matchup. Yeah, we, if we're going to talk about the strong points for Team Liquid, it is Lolo and it is Phoenix. That is how they need to play around this game. Lorlo still, there are a lot of minions in front of his turret. Even though the CS difference isn't really showing right now, it's going to increase a lot as Nar is moving up to the mid lane and CLG are trying to make a team play. Whereas Lorlo here does have teleport, but it might be difficult for them as CLG are closing in with everybody. Narbar kind of timing out. They may also try to be playing around the fact that Phoenix has no summoners. He blew them both aggressively. He's a point of power, but you can pick on him now because he is susceptible. Well, CLG actually going to keep trimming ways by the looks of things. Moving through this top left-hand side of the jungle, trying to threaten Team Liquid Red. Stixay is getting things pushed up here. Going to try and get the minions in towards the tier two. And Nick Smithy again, a little greedy on the play, but his team is here to protect him. Dardock, but he sends his way out to safety. And Nick Smithy should be able to claim the red buff here. Nick Smithy blocks it off. He does get it. No, Dardock stole it away. Yeah, Team Liquid actually have to be very careful because... Oh, Fabi! Does oh, out of the way. Arrow not going to hit, but that's going to be opening up. Nick Smithy moving forward. The bullets are there, and Phoenix going to get the counter kill onto Nick Smithy. Afro slowed down as well. Oh, these four members. Or three, doesn't quite get himself. Uh-oh, Lolo in trouble, though. Darshan going to keep chasing, does have his flash. That boulder toss, though, going to go straight into the minions. That is the picture-perfect way that Team Liquid want to play team fights. Fabi is in the back on Jin, gets the free fire, the ultimate, and Phoenix is right there behind Dardoch on the front lines, dealing damage with Cassiopeia. He's trying to save this game, and he's pulling them back. He is, but I do like that CLG do not back away from the game plan. Yes, they lost that battle, but they go straight to mid, try to get some chip damage in. And here's the fight once again. After Dardoch won that smite steal, they look for more. Fabi flashes the arrow, Phoenix moves into the front, and then Fabi opens up with the snipe. They cat CLG out and get the two kills uh, that we saw there. As you said, right after that, CLG rotating over. Look at all the wards that they have as well. They should be able to... Uh, predict movements here from Team Liquid moving forward and avoid that occurrence again. Impressive though from Darshan to almost solo out Lolo, despite the fact that we thought that Lolo might be getting an edge in the matchup. Lolo again gonna get things turned around on, does burn the ultimate chunk out the wave. Darshan about to go mega, gonna have to be careful. Yeah, everybody here from Team Liquid is down on the bottom side too. They're looking to make one of those power plays on the turret and try and answer some gold. Ash coming down the lane with arrow, but it doesn't look like they have enough to stall. It looks like they're actually just trying to uh, do two objectives at once to make CLG choose which one to defend. Smithy may go for the steal. Uh, he is looking. So choosing two at once kind of forces CLG to choose which one to defend, but it means that Team Liquid actually don't have enough to get either objective. They get a little damage on both, and that's not going to do a whole lot for them as the pressure on top side's working uh, yeah. against them. And they want to answer that. You don't want to just give up all these minions that are now crashing into the turret. So it's a little bit time on the side of CLG, and it's going to be Lorlo having to back, which means they may have to sacrifice Dragon because he has no TP. And again, that strong macro game from CLG is starting to show up here in the middle of it. Infernal Drake is a possibility, but Team Liquid have the Scuttlecraft control. So instead, CLG, they'll consolidate their lanes. They'll get some pressure down as Lolo is forced to enter that top lane with no teleport. We'll see if Steel do want to force something. X Smithy is going to ulti back into the rift. I think it's, the chances are 90 plus, 90 plus percent that CLG forced this Inferno because they are timing the teleport. Ooh. Oh! They hit Dardoch Tosh. I'm going to try and hyper him down. Still autoing in. Aphromu doesn't quite land the stun, but he doesn't need it. Who he? going to get the kill with the ultimate. And with the jungler down, the Infernal Dragon can be unlocked here, but right now they're pushing for mid. Smithy's looking. Dashan charging up, about to go mega. Great gravity field actually finds two. Now Dashan's in, looks for the Nar, but he gets stunned up. Still scoops two back as Lolo flashes out of the way, but Smithy flashes aggressively. That might be too much as Jin gonna start to open up Fabi, hitting Huey in the face. Damage is there, but Phoenix burns the ulti to keep them out of the way. CLG will flash to safety, but they did get the mid turret. Yeah, I got a little bit sloppy there. Uh, you know, they saw a big chunk. Hey, pretty easy gravity field set up here. So, uh, you know, who he gets the big chunk, but then maybe a little bit disconnected on the all-in turret dive there yeah. from CLG. Does go not according to plan. However, they recover right afterwards and they're able to stabilize and still get the two objectives. Definitely could have been cleaner though. Yeah, while they are falling a little bit flat on some of these fights, they're still winning in objectives. And the flash being forced out there from Dardoch, the arrow does land and they commit in true CLG fashion. Everyone moving in for this kill. Ultimate use, he's done, and then they're able to get the objective. We thought it was going to be a clinical turret steal here, but 
this is just too juicy. The yeah. double backline gravity feel are like, oh my goodness, we're in on this, right? Says Darshan. But everyone else was kind of still on turret killing duty. And then they have this step-by-step -step engage where Smithy kind of goes later, who he then charges the Jin to force Fabi to close up shop and stop sniping. Then he flashes out on the Cassiopeia ultimate and we'll see how it settles out here. They're actually pinging down onto Fabi, who has been someone who's really been getting picked on. He's down over 40 CS, Ash ult available. Well, looks like Fabi is going to have to play carefully here. CLG did also secure the Infernal Drake after that turret, so objectives still firmly in the front of their minds here as Team Liquid are kind of forced to react to CLG's plays here, it feels like. They're running around, they're defending reasonably well, but CLG are constantly pushing the tempo of this game. Yeah, and one thing you know, with that tempo that they want to try to stop is Lorlo. He's up 30 CS, he has his Triforce much faster this game than last game, and he's in the advantage both in levels and in items. Yeah, it's it's crazy how the, the same story is still holding true for Team Liquid. They're like, Phoenix and Lorlo, points of power. However, CLG as a team have the lead. They have the lead in objectives. They have the lead in overall gold for the rest of the members. And they have had the lead in team play. The coordination in these fights, uh, even though they were unable to make the dive successful, they recovered very quickly, and they still came out ahead overall. And it's a macro play that you had spoken to. You're talking about, yes, it's standard lanes, there is no lane swap, but it is rotations, it's moving around the map, it's preparation for objectives with vision and with the foresight to be in the right place at the right time. Well, you can see Darshan and Lolo still doing battle there in the top lane, but Darshan is going to be forced to play safely. Yeah. Can't enter a long lane against an Aurelia with a red buff. When she just completed her Triforce, that's a scary place to be. Time to jungle. Ah, pick on someone Maybe your not. own size. <laughs> it's actually about the same size. Oh, goodbye, Harold. Darshan, I guess, just messing around with the Rift Herald. Darshan wins in the do. end. He's still alive. Rift Herald <laughs> isn't. He won it. it. Yeah. <laughs> He's trying to get Baron's favor. He's like, I'll clean out your pit for you before you arrive. Uh, it's all nice and spare. Uh, make sure that we don't throw later at this area, please. <laughs> in before Darshan steals a Baron. I'll call you a prophet as Darshan again, collecting what CS he can, but looks like even one versus one. We know other attention right now. Darshan is going to have to play conservatively. The rest of the lanes are doing fine, though. Phoenix up still, but who he not too far behind and does have the two big items there for Victor. And Sticks a huge lead there for him, just constantly farming ways with the Runins and the Infinity yeah. Edge probably on the way as well. I think that at this point, you know, Team Liquid should try and stay proactive. They actually are in the top lane. Uh, but that's not exactly what I was going to refer to. I was going to refer to bringing Fabi up the long lane, you know, with the rest of the team, you know, in the general area. They look for Jin ult to actually start something off and pick CLG off. Try and be the ones to take the first move and get the initiative in the fight mm -hmm. so that CLG are trying to recover constantly. Uh, if you keep them on the back foot, then maybe you can, you know, make this team goal deficit that you're working with a lot less by picking people off and catching them off guard. Speaking of pickoffs, uh, Stixay is actually building towards Essence Reaver, going for that CDR type build. More about the initiations, more about you know keeping that mana high, spamming out those spells and looking for arrows than just the Infinity Age right now for the team fight damage. Yeah, meanwhile, Fabi on the other side is peaking as far as the flat armor penetration. This is a really good you know, peak. As soon as you get the Ghost Blade, which is 20, the only item in the game with that, then you get the extra Dirk for 10 more. You can really chunk out these squishies. And I feel like they should try and prey on CLG as they're spread out. Uh, it has not really come together, but they're kind of gravitating towards the bottom side now. So much more pressure is being put on <laughs> Phoenix, though, because Fabi is down so much CS. He's going to have trouble. Huh? He can kill Squishies, but can he deal with the front line, right? Can he deal with Smithy and Darshan piling in? It's no. going to be Cassiopeia <laughs> who has to do that. So a lot of pressure on Phoenix. And it's going to be so scary for him if he ever gets caught by CC. And that's the thing, CLG, more than happy to play patient here. They're scaling up with the Ash, they're scaling up with the Victor, Darshan. He is getting tanky now as he builds up towards that random and zone. And things are getting just fine here for CLG. And we've seen them play calm and collected around these objectives. 3-0 up in Taurus, up that first Infernal. There's another Drake for them to take in a minute 10. Team Liquid kind of needs something here, or CLG is going to keep moving forward in the game. And you know what that something is? A turret. They have not killed a single turret in this game, so there's much less space for Team Liquid to work with. Yeah, they want to use this Jin Ultimate in a long lane, but the long lanes are all because Team Liquid have lost their outer turrets. CLG defenses are still strong, and that's why they can just farm here, get right back out to the outer turrets, and they've been holding. TL again trying to keep vision around this area. Do have control right now, as they're going to collapse some tunnels as well. Smithy 
Going to find himself a blue trinket, but Matt busy ruining all his hard work there. Phoenix definitely poised to make a big play here in this next team fight, but Donna goes in. He wants to make a play, but I think he's been caught instead. Arrowed by Stixa, knocked up after he flashes, and it's Mithy still chasing in his Matt. Good coverage there with the door. Fabi now going to try and snipe one out, but the ulti from Bard is going to shut that down. Pink Ward survives. <laughs> Check it off the list. I don't know about this Drake, though, because the fighting is still occurring here, and whichever team comes out ahead as far as forcing the other ones off the field, we'll be able to take an objective. Ooh, he's got the mid lane trapped here, though, and cuts off the entrance. Yeah, they're looking to push for this tier two, and Huey with his ultimate is going to be very threatening for TL to funnel through. TL have to be so careful here. Phoenix is ready. Lolo trying to find Stixay. He does nab him in the back line. They're going to go in on him, but he will be exhausted. Darshan, though, going to get himself chased down, forced to flash out as Lolo books it in the top side as well. Oh, Darshan back in onto Phoenix. They need to catch the Cassio, but they can't quite do it. And now, Babby, what just forward takes out Huhi. Oh my god, what a scrappy fight there from Team Liquid, and they barely pull it out. That could be a big turning point for them. They're very low health, turning over to Inferno, and Stixay has Ash Arrow ready. If he nails someone and they're spread out, they can just kill someone at the low health. There's even Smithy, no smite actually. Now this is risky. CLG trying to challenge, but they need to back off now. And that fight was the closest of margins. Uh, Phoenix barely missed the wall with that Gnarl. He would have gone down. Really clutching it there for Team Liquid. That was a crucial break point in this game and in this series. And they're faced with a really small area to get through, and they force it through. They brute force. Lorlo gets onto 6A. He has to flash away, but he gets the exhaust and two members following him. So Phoenix can open up. Now watch this, Darshan. He ults him towards the wall, just barely oh. misses there. Did not get the stun. That would have meant a dead Phoenix and perhaps a contestable dragon. Yeah, good eye. Smallest that, of margins. That was very close to hitting the remnants of the turret there. And the extra stun would have been it. Instead, it is Phoenix that manages to clean house a bit there. 5 1 and 2 now on the Cassiopeia. We mentioned him being the big key to victory for Team Liquid, as almost always is the case. Cassiopeia is a frightening champion and she just scales and scales. And Phoenix is positioned to keep Liquid in this game and quite possibly take it over as Team Liquid have closed the gap a bit. CLG are not that far ahead now. Definitely would be incredibly important for Team Liquid to strike back and not fall down 0-2 in this series and you know, let that stuff start to play on their mentalities. Now they're in that comeback mood. They feel like they're underdogs, they're fighting back and they've got a little bit of a morale boost here. See if, uh, who's the next person to get caught though? Because Jin and Ash both ready to punish anybody out of position. And two teams with very different strengths here. Top laner very ahead for TL. The AD carry for CLG very ahead. And they're going to have to play around that respectively. They must protect the Ash. And at the same time, Lorlo has to get deep in these fights and take out either Huhi or 6A. CLG cannot afford to have Lorlo flank right into yeah. 6A's face again. That, that was the big draw there as Lorlo took two people out of the fight. And Lolo again going for that Blade of the Ruined King. Much better clip here as far as the overall itemization goes. And he's ripping through the turret. Team Liquid finally claim the turret in the game. And it is Lolo starting to go on a solo rampage there in the top lane. Uh oh, down bottom though, CLG are looking to punish them for keeping Lolo up there. Teleport is ready. There's a deep ward actually behind CLG. Lolo's just going to keep pushing, oh, though. TL feels the like they can actually defend this and hold off the waves. And that's all they have to do. They're just buying time for the Liquid top laner. CLG looking a little scattered for the first time really in the series. Yeah. Lolo starting to open up so much space. And this turret, I think it's just it's gone. Dead. Oh, he, he doesn't get nervous. Yeah, he does have teleport if he really feels scared that they're going to catch him in time. Uh, he can't afford to get hit by the Ash Arrow, but he backs off early enough that the threat is not there. And a very big hold for Team Liquid, mm -hmm. allowing them to get some standing gold from those turrets. Now the gold lead here is very, very minimal. It's all about the item completions, and most of those have come in for both teams, actually, for their third, their second or third item. It also means the Blade of the Rune Cling now completed for Lorlo, which is going to give him so much more 1v1 power against Darshan. And you can see Darshan is already trying to avoid this matchup. He's grouping with the team. And when you get into that mentality, when you have to be moving around as a five-man squad, you fall behind in farm, you fall behind in XP, there's pressure to make plays. Thankfully for them, they have one of their best players, you know, Afro on a playmaker. They have the ability to try to look for these. Six are getting stronger as well. And who is actually... Now taken, oh, almost took the CS lead versus Phoenix. Had it very briefly, I believe, as they've been trading farm back and forth. So money is in the right places, Darshan. 
pretty far behind his lane opponent, but he can certainly make an influence still as this They're looking the to oh. set up a pick here. They're trying to prey on Lolo and his confidence. This could be bad news here for Lolo. He's starting to get slowed down. Darshan about to go mega as Afro throws in the meat for another slow. Autos are still there. Darshan going to wait as long as possible. Wallop not going to connect, and Darshan is now going to get dance around here. Lolo is going to try to turn it around. Darshan scoops him back, but Lolo going to force Afro to flash away, and there's the spike. Oh. Not quite there. Dardock here throws out the ulti for the kill, and now Darshan going to get it turned around. Lolo dives out of the turret, flashes forward and there's the kill. Gorlo with the 1v2 calls the rest of the team down. They get the kills and now they can swing back up to defend. CLD trying to punish them for sending everybody down there though and they get the turret out of mid lane. Can they escape with their lives? I would still say it's worth it for Liquid and Lorlo coming up huge has a massive advantage over Darshan. Oh, that's way more than worth it. They got a <laughs> turret down bottom as well plus the two kills and they have control of the map. He's we still talk, pushing. Yeah, they're standing gold, as we talked about. Yeah, being down in turrets hurts, but now they're reclaiming oh all of God. that turret gold. Nick's actually got tagged there. Jin gonna stun him up. Donna buffers through the arrow for the kill, and Matt able to take him down. Nick Smithy, you better tunnel out the safety, because Team Liquid are gonna chase you. When it rains, it pours here for Team Liquid. They are storming back into this game. Now they've got the lead. The Drakes were tied up. Now they even have Baron control here with the Scuttle Crab. Huge minion wave up top. A ridiculous swing in gold. If we'll look at the gold graph later, that is a huge spike here for Team Liquid. And off the back of Lorlo split pushing. It's going to be hard for CLG now. What's the answer here? They need to look for hard initiations or try to have those 2v1s against Lorlo, but it just backfired. And they were trying to play into Lorlo's confidence. They know he's ahead. They know he can win the 1v1, so send two down. But look at this. He plays it so well. He's able to dash out of the first stun with his Q, and then Darshan is really hesitating to use the ult because he's worried it's going to get dodged too. And you can see he's never giving Afro a good spot to get the stun. Yeah. That's why Afro held onto the stun for so long, because Lorlo did a really good job of dodging. And even though Afro Moon dodges that, he's not going to be able to dodge the barrel. And then Lorlo gets his reward for the one versus two play there and delaying the enemy. <laughs> That's that synergy. Don't even look at me. All right, yeah, good job. I know it's a good job. Another day in the office. Focus on the game here because we're in a very intense playoff series trying to come back. And Lolo actually took two turrets off the back of that huge 1v2 play as well. CLG going to try and answer back with a Cloud Drake here. They will get it, but things start to heat up. TL take the gold lead, I believe, for the first time really in this game. And they're still fighting. Matt barely gets out from under the arrow. But CLG might still want it. Darshan looking for a flank. He's found Matt. Going to hop forward. Looking for Fabi. x -Smithy. Gets a knock up, but a good off from Dardock might keep them away. Aurelia coming in with the TP. It's cancelled. x -Smithy actually is going to dust play down. And now Afromu finds the two carries. Phoenix and Fabi need to turn it around. Darshan threatening with the Mega Nava. Dardock going to oh. keep him down. Dardock goes back in and sticks a. We'll take him down. Wow. That, that was so critical. Lorlo canceled his TP. They backed off the play and they stuck around, allowing them to kill off Dardock. Yeah. That re-engage from Dardock was definitely ill-advised, and we'll see if they pay for it more than that. It could just be a little bit of a stall to this game, but it, that's definitely a, not the best of choices. Massive mini wave here in the bot lane that's going to need to be answered. They got summoners on many key targets here. With Fabi having nothing, they could look for something in mid lane. Arrow is up in one or two seconds. It does put a stall. Oh, They're here looking. we go. Teleport goes from Darshan. He's going to try and flank around Fabi. Big play here. Arrow lands in. Nails Fabi. Rest of the team not there. Afrim, who can't quite find in time. Does slow him down, but Darshan goes all the way in. Huey managed to tag him. Fabi, they will get him, but Darshan taking down. But Huey wasn't getting jumped by Lola, but CLG peel and managed to take him down. Nah has gone down. Phoenix flashes in, looking for more. Whoa. Stixay firing away. Gets one, gets two. A triple kill for Stixay. The wheels fall off for TL, and CLG can look to move to Baron. What a huge fight as Dardox caught. Oh, Bad news bears, but the ulti for down ground. If you'll catch his in, that's another one. Six day! Not gonna get it, but five for TL in game two. Stardock is going to be kicking himself after that one. He unnecessary re-engage, and it might even be the Okay, the inhibitor. Calm down a little bit, because now it's just gonna be the inhibitor plus baron control here for CLG. They could probably get the Baron buff as well. But man, if we Dardock. The team fight there re-engaged, loses them the mid lane, and then comes back immediately to die, wandering around mid lane. What a punish from CLG. Very disjointed team fight there. As half the members are running out, half the members are running in, you could feel the panic. That poise that we talked about from CLG having- Oh, we got out. Oh, that was close. Yes, it was.
<laughs> Smithy does get the ban for himself, though. A little bit of a clincher. I thought he stole yeah. it with the Jin ulti. I, I mean, this is why so many people put importance on the late game poise uh, and the difference here. But there's the arrow. Great job by Six A landing it, and Afro moves just air barely able to get off the slow. That allows Huhi to land his stun. Lorlo gets locked up as he tries to engage into the gravity field. This is a really big moment as well. Six A stands toe to toe with Phoenix in the miasma. They get the double kills there, so he heals off it as well. Doesn't go down, and then it is to the point where Dardox just, oh my God, I messed up so bad. I'm sorry, guys. I'm sorry. But he's wandering around here, and he gives away even more into the very edge of the gravity field there to that, drop again. He actually body slammed Minion there, which interrupted it. And there, yeah. uh, although Phoenix was going for an aggressive play and, you know, it was good job by Six A, Phoenix misplayed. He flash ultied Smithy. One man flash ulti on Smithy. If that was pointed towards Six A, Six A dies, they win that fight. So uh, some over aggression there, trying to make up for mistakes of his teammates. And to make matters worse, a QSS and an Infinity Edge have now oh. been finished for Six A. So the Ash. Well and truly online, a CLG Baron in power looking to close out game two versus TL. Well, they're gonna definitely close out this top turret as they move in with a big amount of minions. Team Liquid though, they have had surprises. They still do have a lot of strength on their solo laners and look for Phoenix to try to come up big here. Has no flash though, must be careful about these initiations. He just started here for CLG, but Team Liquid, pretty good wave clear. CLG, they're happy to play patient. Big wave bottom lane is causing some stress for CLG. Arrow is available, so is the Bard ulti. They need to play it slow. Six A again, just firing pot shots in. Mid inhibitors down as well, so CLG know they have pressure coming in here. CLG just have to be careful not to get caught. Yeah, I really like the Guardian Angel vibe from Lorlo. He knows it's all in on the next team fight. Yeah. And that provides you a huge boost in a single team fight, but. We'll see if it's enough because Team Liquid's inhibitor turret is slowly whittling down and won't last much longer. Well, CLG again is continuing the siege. They've got two Baron up crews. Start off, looks for the flash, doesn't get it, gets arrowed instead. Damage is coming through. Ulti gets the shot back in, but he hops out to safety. Fabi gonna start opening up now with the ultimate, but canceled again by the Bard. Tower is low, CLG one hit away. Darshan needs another auto, does weave it in. And CLG now poised again to try and do damage as these mid Nexus turrets starting to take pain as well. CLG just needs to play it slow. The Nexus is already under fire here, but look at the chunk onto Lorlo from Huhi. Bad news here. Team Liquid starting to lose ground here. Then two minutes actually take out one. CLG looking the top in here as well. Just going all wrong for Team Liquid today. Their base is falling to pieces. Communication breakdown here for Team Liquid as they were just starting to have their resurgence in this game and, and have some control as well that one fight really snowballed against them into a couple of misplays from a couple of different people. And now CLG are feeling very confident in their position. And it speaks to the poise, to the shock calling of CLG, staying calm when behind, always looking for a way to win. The importance of these veteran in-game leaders and Aframu specifically has been doing this job for so long with CLG directing early in-game macro, macro play, but most importantly, it's the experience with the late game situations. Where it's super tense like this, where one team fight can mean the difference between winning this game, going two up in a series, and so much they momentum. They have to be careful, Ash Arrow is available. Oh, they catch them, and Aurelia is not here yet. But onto two, they tie up the carries. Aphromoo tries to stun them up, and it's Smithy, kind of fighting off Dardock CLG, just throwing poke in, don't need to commit. Team Liquid still trying to stop this Elder Dragon. Games have been won and lost, definitely, between these two teams at Elder Dragon, even with the team significantly behind Flash over. back to game three earlier this season. This is where the turnaround came, and it was CLG behind. They won the fight. Liquid could look to do the same. Too many problems, though, for Team Liquid. Mid lane, now they have to go to a 10 to a top, pushing with the supers there in both those lands, and the bottom wave is built up. CLG have got themselves control around the objective. Team Liquid, this is make or break time. They're not starting off the Elder Dragon, though. They're just looking for a pick here waiting for the Ash Arrow to come back up. That yeah. cooldown reduction you'd mentioned. Such a short cooldown at this point. And TL have to play this so carefully. They're only going to get one shot, if any. Huhi poking out Dardoch. And X Smithy again just waiting around. CLG have now started the Elder Dragon. The arrow is available. It's only a 48 second cooldown at this point in the game. They can look to turn for the fight. It's risky to trade for this 50-50 this smite. Team Liquid has to go though, CLG. 
Just gonna, again, oh. stay patient here. The dragon actually resets it. Smithy's still taking damage. Garnock is on the side. He wants to go for the steal. CLG needs to make a call. They split up. Actually, CLG are the ones with time working in their favor. Look at the minions. All they need to do is delay. They don't even have to make the call. It's Team Liquid. The onus is on them, and they have to go for the minions. CLG wait them out. Now they'll try and claim the reward. Darduck, Miracle Steal? That's all you get. Donald Kuz, he doesn't oh. get it. And now he's just going to get shredded to pieces. 5v4 as CLG claim the Elder Dragon and force Phoenix to flash. And that is critical. The base is cracked open. They have the Elder Dragon. They are empowered with this buff for two minutes. They are going to look to push down bot, crack the last inhibitor. Not going to need two minutes, I don't think. CLG going to claim the T2 in bottom lane. And Smithy going to go back and use the ulti. CLG not going to move out just yet. They have some business to attend to. Mid inhib did respawn, but I don't think it's going to last too much longer. They're looking to end the game with this buff. There's no Nexus turrets available. Smithy rejoining the team. We're going to need a miracle fight here from Phoenix, who has no summoners. Team Liquid will see what they can do. Fabi opening up for the ultimate, but Smithy going to try and stop him. There's Lolo in the back line. Looks to assassinate Aphromu. Not going to get it. Gets through the bit of rubble, and now the GA's popped in for Lolo. Smithy straight into the back line, just tying them up, but Lolo <laughs> is going to go down. Smithy, he's so tanky. And CLG just get a free fire on the Nexus. Darshan scoops up everybody as CLG going to start to go wild in the base of Team Liquid. Nexus, hopefully, though, it's going to go down. And a chaotic end to game two. CLG up 2-0. What a comeback from CLG. Very different game one and game two. You saw the game plan working for Team Liquid in the second game. They got ahead, but it was individual mistakes, miscommunications, which cost them and flipped this game on its head. In-game focus for CLG and discipline in the late game has been the advantage that has been winning them games. CLG, they're a team that have actually practiced on purpose playing from behind in scrims significantly. They get behind on purpose, then they play from behind. They're, they're very well accustomed uh, you know, to try, what are the next steps to do to get back into a game? Um, whereas Team Liquid, as we said, uh, during the normal season, if they ever had a goal deficit at 20 minutes, they lost that game. And unfortunately for them, it kind of worked out the other way there. But with the series standing at 2-0 in CLG's favor, let's go back to the analyst desk to get a breakdown. Thank you very much, gentlemen. 2-0 is right, but the second game didn't come as easily as the first one did here for CLG. But of course, the W is the W. They'll be happy to have it under their belts. For Team Liquid, Tall Order now going to have to win three in a row if they want to make their way to the semifinals. But breaking down this game in particular, we once again saw Team Liquid opt for the red side and choose some very strong soul laners. A lot of what we talked about was needing to continue that focus on the soul laners and let them create the advantages. Yeah, I mean, it wasn't like any novel picks, really. I think we can have predicted the Aurelia as soon as we saw that in our first pick. It's right. kind of Lorlo's best champion and really good in that matchup. And he, he kind of took over points in the game, but... There were just too many team flaws, despite the fact that their carries were getting ahead. Yeah, I also think that like, going back to the the whole the way that the early game played out, uh, when they when Team Liquid had adapted to what CLG had done previously, and they actually brought Matt to the top side of the map to stop their solo laners from getting you know lane swapped on again by CLG. Right. I think that was actually really interesting because we were talking. I thought they could uh, CLG could have made that play even faster because they went for a red buff and who he had ghosts and they didn't ghost and ignore the red buff to get that dive off and then Darshan's. Um, Meganar runs out and he can't get the combo. Yeah. So when it's, following it's, that, we saw a very greedy Krug yeah, attempt it, it, but from yeah. Smithy that netted a kill for Team Liquid. So right. it kind of all fell apart. Right. So even though Team Liquid's adapting, CLG's not executing quite as cleanly. And there's this little ebb and flow to the game where you're wondering, you know, come game three, is CLG going to be cleaner or will Team Liquid be even further ahead of catching up on this apparent meta that CLG's defining? Well, and that's the thing. So CLG was able to establish at least a slight lead, uh, you know, across the map. But we did see the concentration of gold on that Cassiopeia and the Aurelia coming up big for Team Liquid in those 1v1s, in particular 1v2s as well. Putting a spotlight on Lorlo here, I mean, you mentioned he has a mastery of this champion on Aurelia, but we did see him in that 1v2 in the bot lane, uh, you know, handling a Gnar and a Bard at the same time while the rest of the team roams down, and top it all off with the sweet high five between both him <laughs> yeah. and Dardock. I mean, if only, if anything, just to prove once again how emotional this team is and how really how momentum really does play That's into so their game. Yeah, just dodge out the first couple abilities, and once that wall ups out, you know, you just hop onto Aphromoo, 
Darshan has to burn the ult basically defensively because there's no wall to pin him against. Yep. And then from there, the rest of Team Liquid is collapsing now that he's stalled out for so long and they get this really nice double kill. A little chaos there from Dardoch just throwing that barrel. Mm -hmm. But uh, really clean and then this is what you like to see from them. They get they, they pump each other up when they're winning. Right. And you, you see that in the game, you're like, oh, sick, TL's turning it around, this is gonna be a good series. And then the wheels just kind of came off with that TP play. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I mean, it still wasn't as clean, but in terms of comparing game one to game two, I'd say a step up for Team Liquid, right, in terms of the way they're playing individually. And, and the question is, that same kind of momentum, can they keep their mentality to the point that if they get another early lead or do get those early kills onto the solo laners, they can actually push that forward into a victory? That'll be the true test for them, because as it stands, when they seem to get locked into those more 5v5, those straight up 5v5 scenarios against CLG, CLG's coming out on top. Yeah, I feel like a lot of TL are just playing for themselves. We're seeing things like, even, even just basic stuff like, you know, red smite for Gragas. He's not mm -hmm. going to make too much use of that. It'll make him a little bit tankier and stuff like that. But then, like, not blocking Prey Seekers, not blocking for Fabi on the W in game one. So I, I feel as though these are just indications of how they aren't playing as a team up against one of the teams in our league that is honestly just lauded for their teamwork when they are on point. CLG is like, no, we don't may not have individual right. skill. We have the teamwork. But we'll support every one of our members in every decision they make. And I also think getting first turret right now is something that doesn't seem to be too much on TL's radar, mm -hmm. whereas CLG are like, let's get that first turret goal. This seems to be a high priority for them. So CLG playing as a team, we'll see that showcase at that 31 minute mark, a five for one trade in the mid lane, gonna net them inhib turret, inhib, plus a Baron on the back end. Yep, and this is that TP flank that they're so famous for. When this play started, I thought Darshan was too far away to really connect on it, but they commit to it really hard, they collapse, and they're able to kick Fabi off at the start of the fight. And then it, it looks like it's gonna be pretty scrappy with Phoenix potentially being able to clean up really hard, but he's not able to quite get the stun on the right targets, doesn't actually get anyone with that, and then Stix is just barely able to live, where you think if he was able to put that on a maybe Stix A or somebody else, he, he could have cleaned that whole fight up. Yeah, it's a possibility that CLG Maybe we would have actually disengaged afterwards. And Dardoch walks up, wants to use his Ruby Side Stone, get a ward down. He does, but he they found actually, him. He found him. They were actually stopped, right though. They got the vision. Do the Raptors. Uh. So. Um, but we did see how low the health bars were there for CLG. And given, you know, for example, this, the scoreline and the damage output of the Cassiopeia, we did see how a lot of these fights could kind of teeter on a knife's edge. And if given, you know, slightly different positionings and mechanical plays, possibly Team Liquid comes out on top. Yeah, and even like dodging arrows and stuff like that, like that'd be dodged and juked into the arrow. If he dodges up, maybe that's a wasted TP for CLG and then a much sloppier fight. So even those things don't seem to be on point for TL today. Yeah, Team Liquid on your screens the now. Gearing up for game three. Important to note, CLG has once again selected the blue side for game three. So Team Liquid staying on red, forced to in this situation, are also opting to sub in Jint for Fabi. So we have an ADC substitution moving into game three here for Team Liquid. So if anything, really just looking to switch things up. Now, of course, we haven't seen Jint on the LCS stage. So this is a very gutsy call here uh, to switch things up more, I, I would have to assume, for a shakeup in terms of uh, the personalities on the stage and possibly the champion pools. Uh, yeah, but the, the AD care you meta is very defined. Stagnant. It's, yeah, yeah I mean, it's you, might, you might bust out a Twitch yeah, or like some right. of these, these more pocket pick things, but I don't really, I don't think you're gonna go with this substitute who you haven't had. I know they right. scrimmed with him a little Unless bit. He's a corky man. We saw corky in Europe. May maybe something like that, but a, a Twitch or one of these more team dependent strategies. Right. I can't imagine that coming into play. And with CLG, uh, CLG basically outplaying Team Liquid in a map movement sense, I don't see how bringing in a sub player cleans think. up that kind of issue. No. Right, yeah, I can't imagine teamwork and communication gets cleaner when you bring in the guy you've been playing less with. Of course, that is an assumption of mine. I am yes. not privy to their practice schedules <laughs> or who they've actually been playing with. I would have just assumed they're practicing more with their actual starter. Yeah. Right. Uh, also, though, uh, you know, there's always the thing where you're bringing in a fresh guy. The team might be a little tilted. This guy's not tilted. That's so, true. So yeah, he's, yeah. Got, he's got that happy-go-lucky positive mindset. I get to play. <laughs> like, yeah. comes I'm in. on stage in front of a couple hundred thousand people. Awesome. Exactly. So, you know, if he's able to get his nerves under control, I wonder what his lane phase is going to be like because right now lane is more important than it was before and you have to get in the, into those lanes early on and actually play and we've been seeing bottom lane has been a little bit of a push and pull in this series and so far it's kind of been pulled sealed just well, I guess yeah if, if you know you're gonna get standard lanes maybe this kid's great at laning and he can kind of bully CLG to kind of knock them off that tempo that they seem to have swapping into the to get that top turret so maybe just by pure mechanical skill he can he can make a difference but it, it's like look, look Jint and the rest of Team Liquid are gonna have to have nerves of steel here as it is do or die time for Team Liquid so don't go anywhere because CLG is poised for a sweep when the North American LCS quarterfinal continues in just three and a half minutes
It is a long road for either of these two teams in the series. Can TL tie it up or are CLG going to put themselves in the best possible position? When Savvy gets imported to SKT, this will be the series that... He remembers. Yeah. That molded okay. him as a player. Aaron lands it. Stun is perfect and Xmuthi get a CC chain into death. Matt now getting low. Xmuthi still chasing him, but Dardoch could even be in trouble. Phoenix... Oh! oh! Aptly named Preyseeker. I stun him, I stun him. Onar, Onar, Onar. Kill Rek'Sai, kill Rek'Sai, kill Rek'Sai. That's it, that's it, that's it. Careful, don't shoot so far. LG Peel and managed to take him down. Nah, has gone down. Phoenix flashes in, looking for more. Stixxay firing away, gets one, gets two. A triple kill for Stixxay. Just keep going, keep going. Aurelia, Aurelia, Aurelia. I got this guy. I stun him, I stun him. Okay, okay. I'm going to zone the other one. 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 Hey, Cassio. And a chaotic ends the game to CLG up 2-0.